My next guest is a hilarious stand-up comedian and one of the newest writers on Conan. Please welcome Skylar Higley. Skylar, thank you for being here, man. Thank you for having me. What's it like joining mid-pandemic? Because if you're in a writer's room, it's essentially a lot of chemistry and you have to do the weirdest thing imaginable, which is this cold Zoom meeting and technical errors. It took, I would say, maybe slightly longer than um, usual, but I think it's fine now. Like coming into a, a new writing staff, I think always the problem is in a new group of people, it's always like, when do I make the joke? And the thing about Zoom is if you try to make a joke at the same time as somebody else, it's just nobody's going to hear anything either of you said. So that was kind of like the first big hurdle of like, when do I even talk? Because everybody is already on the same page about things. I know what you mean. Other than that, like being in the room is one of the things I enjoy the most about my day because a lot of it on is particularly with the Conan staff, everybody's friends. So a lot of it's just like kind of bullshitting a lot. Uh, the same thing that Andy was talking about being very mean to each other or not each other, but being mean about things and making jokes that are like, yeah, we're all just like hanging out. And then like, a half hour or more into the meeting, then Matt O'Brien will be like, okay, let's read some pitches. And, you know, it's like, we've been just doing nothing for a while. Yeah, but it is a great way to go in though. And you know, you're talking like a human being and not just go in cold and have to read an incredibly dumb sketch. Right. Like, this is Dr. Fart Helicopter. Right. And God forbid Conan joins the Zoom, then we're just like, not even gonna get to any then it's just like you know conan bits and then we just are like hanging out with him and having fun so it's just like a, it the most fun i think someone could probably have uh working in the time that we're working so you started as, as a stand-up in chicago and is this true you grew up mormon i did um and it was a thing that like i talk about it in stand-up a lot it was a thing that i didn't even think was weird or like something that people didn't relate to until I was about a year in. And then everybody's like, you grew up Mormon. That's like kind of crazy. And I was like, oh, is it? And they're like, yeah, nobody's Mormon, except for if you grow up in Utah where I grew up, then everybody's Mormon. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's normal for like everybody in the same state to be like almost the same religion, right? And everybody else is like, no. No, that is, that is a Utah thing. That is, uh, yeah, because it's a very specific one. And they get a lot of hate just because it's so new. Yeah. Need the, another hundred years where until it's acceptable. Or maybe just get out of Utah. Maybe tour. I mean, yeah, that was, that was my thing. Is I just had to, like, get out because I just, I always felt out of place in, in Utah. And I didn't, like, I just didn't, you know, I, I wasn't the same as everybody else. I, like, it's a state that's, like, what? 99.99 percent white it's like yeah. me and the utah jazz are the only black people there right and i moved to chicago and it like it's it was just much more like a i became myself i think through like comedy you know i grew up very religious and there's a back part of my mind where i'm like you know what you make a killing is if you become a church comic okay um that's something that i had considered because like I remember when I was going to go into comedy, um, my mom uh, like told my family and immediately my grandma got me this DVD that was like, um, like to say like, hey, if you're going to do comedy, you know, don't have to like curse and stuff. You could be like one of these like best Mormon comedians. Yeah. She had this like specific DVD that I never watched, by the way, that um, was oh, just like, comedy? yeah, it was like Mormon comedy that was like, you ever be at church and, you know, X, Y, Z, you take the sacrament and then you feel connected to Christ. Like, I don't know how that could be funny. Bring them young material. But they make a killing. Just imagine being like, you're, you're killing it. You're killing it for the Lord. So you think God is happy with you the whole time. Yeah. And then you get like a giant check, 10% of which you give back to the church, but that's okay. Like, I mean, that's got to be a pretty good living. You know what? I've convinced myself I'm going to go do church comedy now. Wow. What, what religion did you grow up in? Uh, my parents made up their own thing. They did? They took a little bit of, yeah, Catholicism and uh, made up their own thing and um, tried to take that act on the roads. We were missionaries for that. 
and it did not work out. We had zero followers. How long were you missionary for? Uh, maybe 10 years. Oh, That's a long time. All right. Yeah. But not like, in the- like help people and like staying with them and, 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 and uh, you know, we're going to build a school. We were just like uh, aggressive street preachers. We'd go to a concert outside of a Utah jazz game or something and just be screaming at people. Oh my God. You were like the people with yeah. the sign. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure in Mormonism, like when you turn uh, 18 to like, it's like men like go on missions for like two years where like that's your whole thing. Everybody's seen the Book of Mormon musical. They know how this works. Yeah. I was so afraid of like doing that because like by that time I was like, I'm not gonna be, I can't commit to something like that for like two years and just do this like one thing. So you guys going like 10 years and then not even being like, knock, knock, hi, how you doing? Do we want to talk about this guy? But like screaming at people, that's nuts, man. Yeah, it's a lot. So people are like, you nervous to do stand up? Like, no, as long as I'm not telling older women that they're going to hell, I think I'm all right. That was probably the thing in Walmart that gave you the confidence to be like, yeah, "Yeah, if I, yeah, (laughs) if I bomb, it's like, you know, I can bomb. It's no worse than the things that I've said to people on the street. Yeah, but I think uh, missionaries and religious people have insulated themselves so you can't bomb. So if anyone persecutes you, they don't get it. They're not saved. I think comedians need that. We need a way to insulate ourselves because now if you don't do well, or someone hates you, it's like, they hate me. Yeah. We well, that's what I, God. that's what I do is like, if I get off stage and I bombed, I'm like, they didn't get it. They don't get any jokes. They all, you know, I am God. Make it about them. Yeah. I think the <laughs> only way to truly navigate um, comedy and not like be, Uh, anxious and depressed all the time is you're either like anxious and like self-hating like me or you are just a huge like narcissist and you think like everything you do is perfect and um I mean like I go back and forth I wish I had more of the second one just to be like I see the clips that people release and I see the stuff they put out and like I wish I had that confidence can you imagine the the pathology involved to like actually comment something negative on of like something else that somebody made like who are you what do you do if there are any negative comments on this i will personally fight each and every negative comment (laughs) i will find now you're inviting them but that's fine because that's just engagement and it's going to boost us in the algorithm that's right negativity rises to the top Mm -hmm. to start the conversation so people are like oh something because there's nothing interesting about kill that crush it good so people want i think we should start a feud between us, we should be a huge blow up so we have it in the thumbnail. Do you want to just start just like some some beef over some sort of like just a, some kind of public rivalry? Yeah, it's going to be great for our brands. I'm going to go hard, hardcore into anti-masking. You can be the, cause okay. you'll be the fan right. favorite. I, I'll be the villain and I'll just say... Yeah. I, I won't even go anti-mask. They say you wear two masks now. I'm just going to be going hard into like, I only wear one mask. And that, that can be our split. Yeah. See, that's the stance. That's the nuanced stance is the one mask guy. This guy sells out. PC culture wants him to wear two masks. Mm-hmm. Well, fuck. It is gross that that's what, that's what generates any sort of heat and success. It's just the negativity. And I'm 100% down to play the game. Mm-hmm. I think we'll we'll get in a fight about uh, joke theft, but it's going to be the worst joke. Right. I stole from you something that's <laughs> incredibly corny. Yeah, he stole my thing about how like sometimes you take an edible and then you're suddenly like so high out of nowhere. The untouched that was my comedy joke. market of I took an edible and then something we it's like every time I hear the stories I'm like you're an adult. You took an edible on a plane. What did you think was going to happen? Right. No, it's a story. You took an edible and nothing happened. Or, or the whole, like, I have worked with or around kids. And you know what? I don't like them. It's like, great. Like, we, ha, hey, like we know. Ha, hey, I love it. Okay. Oh. Well, we have a very bright future. I like this. I can't wait to see you again and perform on a real show. I know. Uh, you're killing it on the show. Everyone loves you around there. So hang in there. Keep, keep doing your thing. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Skylar Higley, everyone.